and we're recording now. So uh, welcome, and I'm really excited to um, be here with, and actually, I don't know how to pronounce your um, your name, um, Sar um, Saraf Diani, is that right. is that right or close? Or? Right. Yeah, it's okay, right. Okay, okay. Um, and, then, and then how do you say it? I say it Saraf, Saraf Diani. Okay, Saraf Diani. Yeah, and that's uh, that's a really really cool name. Uh, before we get into talking about Nav, uh, would you mind talking about how you got um, such a cool name? Okay, so in India, I guess the names are given by parents and the family, so that's uh -huh. where I, I got it. So there's no cool story behind it. Oh uh, uh, no, uh, no cool story. It was just like your mom and dad's favorite name. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, that's uh, that's fair. So. Um, so, uh, so, so Sarif is a um, nav um, nav professional. He knows um, he knows pretty much everything that there is to know about um, nav, and especially uh, especially from um, from what I can tell, um, the um, the most recent version which have just a lot of really really cool stuff that Microsoft um, put in it. But but before uh, before we get into that, could you give just a really high level view for somebody that doesn't even know what NAV is or doesn't even know what ERP is about like what is, what is NAV? So yeah, as an ERP is something that uh, as, as, as a common user, you'll see it as a behind the scenes software, which helps you when you go to your stores to get your billing done. It's actually uh, used by companies who want to manage the different areas of their businesses with the software. And there are different players other than Microsoft in the ERP space. So it's not end user software as in not everybody uses it, but behind the scene, it's part of your daily life. You somehow directly or indirectly interact with an ERP system. And uh, NAV is one of the Microsoft offering, which now is called as Business Center. Uh, they have, rebranded the product and now it's called business center cool yeah and and like in uh, in my company then uh, then mostly the accounting people and warehouse um, people and, and like the purchasing people use it um, but but i think in um, in nav um, so, so my company uses mostly those three functions but nav has a few other um, specialties um, too so it's kind of like just back um, um, back end um, user um, so, um, software. So, um, can you talk about how you got into um, working with NAV? So, I, I actually didn't plan to be an app developer, but it, you know, as in uh, in India, you go through your education. Then after that, you got offers from your company. So, I was actually doing my uh, postgraduate in telecommunication. And I was so much interested with programming because my background was uh, computer science as, a, as, as my bachelor's degree. And one of the partner from India happened to be there to hire some people. And they wanted to be uh, people from, uh, for Dynamics Nav at that time. So I got selected, shifted from my city to the place where that company was. And that's how I kind of get into Nav world. Uh, okay, so um, so that's um, so that's really cool. And and, and your um, I saw on your biography that you were at Tectura, and and yes. actually um, actually one of the um, my my first thought is because pretty much all of the people that I've met that that are really good at making presentations all work for Archer Point. And, and this was before I I realized that you work for Archer Point now, um, right. but. Um, but but I was thinking, oh, this is really interesting. He works for Tectura, but he's great at presentations. He's the first non-Archer Point person that I met. And then, uh, and then I saw your biography more, and and I realized, oh, um, he actually does work for Archer Point. So so one of my questions is why uh, why is it that like 99 out of 100 of the best like Nav presenters and Nav teachers are all Archer Point people? So in Archer Point, we do believe in building the community uh, to teach and to learn uh, and work with the community to share our knowledge because at the end of the day, we all understand that um, you know, it, it, it'll, it'll help the bigger ecosystem if we start sharing our knowledges to the uh, rest of the community. So uh, one of the part that we do is uh, once in a week, we publish what we learn internally in our Yammer network, Yammer network as a blog post, that these are the questions that developer 
helped each other on a, a Yammer conversation and that's get published as a blog post. So we, you know, kind of that's uh, one of our uh, core thing that we follow that we should keep on learning about the product and sharing about it in the rest of the community. Cool. And so um, was the, uh, was that why they recruited you because you're so good at sharing or, or did you become good at sharing after you got recruited? Uh, no, I was actually started sharing back in 2010. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, as in, I actually don't know why specifically was that for sharing or because I went through the same process as every company has with the interview processes, your, you know, your technical rounds, your HR interviews and all. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure that that was the only reason or there were other reasons also. Cool. And I, um, I also want to talk about, because your um, I've, um, I've noticed your, um, your videos and your blog posts are very, very good. Um, and, and especially, um, especially for, uh, um, because a lot of, um, a lot of people write really confusing stuff about um, Navision that you have to like read, uh, re read through like 30 times before you kind of get the idea. But, but the really cool thing about the way that you um, do um, pretty much everything that I've seen is that you, you, you explain everything along the way so, so that someone that's a, a seasoned professional or someone that's a beginner can um, can read through and get a lot of good information from your um, from your um, um, fr from your video or from your from your blog post. And so um, I'm wondering, like how how you how you develop how you develop that, um, and and have you always been that way, like really good at training, and um, and like what's um, what's the process that you went through to um, to get to be so good at explaining stuff. Uh, so yeah, I actually start it from the point where uh, somebody who actually don't know anything about it should actually start it from there because uh, majority of my blogs are based on the problem that I actually faced while working on something, majority of them. Mm -hmm. uh, back when I started in 2010, uh, all the blogs were kind of only directed toward the problems that I faced and how I solved them. So maybe... Uh, the way I started it is to figure out a solution of a problem. So I actually started it as, as a newbie in Navigen at that time. So that, that approach remains same, that I should actually start from point zero where I have no knowledge why this error will come or why this problem will become or why somebody want to use this feature in the product. And that's how I guess that's been going on. That so if you start looking at it from the uh, perspective of that you actually face this problem, then you'll start it from zero to, to the point where the problem is solved. Uh, okay, so, uh, uh, so, so basically your approach is that if you, uh, if, you get, if you get a problem and then you're thinking, oh, um, now that I've solved this problem, it would make a good blog post, then you start thinking of how, um, how, to, how to break it down so that someone starting from zero could go through yes. and um, fix it. Okay. That's a um, that's a really cool that's a really cool approach. Thanks. So, um, anything else um, as far as your secret about um, making really accessible um, instruction instructional like videos and blog posts? Uh, no, actually, it's it's all about how you actually will solve it if you get into the situation, or how if a customer requests you about this kind of solution how will actually start approaching toward that solution. So, it, you know, you need to start thinking from the perspective of that you don't know the product or you are an user who is using the product. So from where you will actually start then to reach to this point. So I don't think as a, to me now, it doesn't seem as, a, as, as something that I have to think it through. Mm -hmm. It automatically comes when I start typing things. So yeah, as in there is nothing secret as in, uh, I recently started about the uh, YouTube stuff and all uh, for all these years, for last seven, eight years, it was just only blogging. Uh, uh, okay. So, so what made you transition into um, doing YouTube? Uh, so there are 
certain areas that you can't write about or people will not understand when you write about things like mm-hmm. if you are explaining a different concept or if you are trying to uh show how a specific piece of code is written you can try uh, with multiple article but then it becomes so complex and people have to follow it through so sometime it's good to have videos around those things which are easy to understand people can see what's happening pause the video try it at their at that system and then really follow what's happening so that makes it more easier now cool so what what was your first video like that um about uh, th- th- that you decided okay now i need to make a video because this is too complicated just for um writing stuff out i guess the first one uh, which is around nav was around installation because there were so many questions i had written so many blogs about installing different versions and then there were so many comments around it that i get this error message i get this error message so then i thought about let's record a video where i cover all these questions which are part of that blog post where they, these questions are and really try to uh, you know figure out a exact way where you don't get any errors that you check your system prerequisite you check your requirements that are needed then what step you need to follow to achieve that and then the major bigger one next was where i thought that it can only be done with a video was a report development training kind of thing so how you actually start building uh, a report how you do different things that were again part of the questions in in different blogs oh, okay yeah that, uh, that's really uh, that's really cool and that's really interesting so um can you um so 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 there's um, there's been a whole bunch of different versions of navision over um over the years it started out navision then microsoft bought it and changed it into now um, yeah. um and then um and then uh, and, and my uh, my company right now we're um we're, we're in between the migration of now 2009 to new th- now 2018 um and then and the business central is the technology after um after that um could um could you talk about um uh, could you talk about how navision has grown over, um grown over the years um just kind of step by step as, as far as what you see as as the um big milestones in navision progressing to get up to business central uh yeah i guess the major change happened uh, and maybe i'm wrong is that on the time when i joined the product which was uh, back in 2010 when microsoft introduced nav 2009 with a uh role dealer client which was the modern client at that time and everything was different there uh, uh the way uh, the client used to install the way client used to work was completely different dot net became the major part of the product where you need to have it for the debugging and all those things but when i look back in uh for as of today when i look back i think at that time when nav 2013 and 2013 r2 were released uh what microsoft started doing is kind of wh- where the product is now so all the all the key uh, cool uh, technical changes like uh, the multi tenancy which is right now is being offered or uh, available on the saas version was actually introduced in nav 2013 r2 where you can have multiple tenants in you know with the shared database application database structure so that was actually introduced in nav 2013 r2 and now it's kind of a solution for the saas customers then the major uh, change after 2009 was at 2018 where uh, the al or i would say 2016 and 18 where there were some instances where the future was visible with events and a uh, way to kind of keep your code cleaner and then in 2018 where microsoft introduced the al programming as kind of the first beta version of it and then with uh, business central becoming the product name it's completely changed now so i i would consider 2009 as one of the major change key change factor and then 2016 to 2018 i'll keep all these in in kind of the same zone which were the second milestone towards the future 
Okay, okay, that, uh, that, that makes sense. And um, could you talk about some of the really cool new features about uh, Business Central? And, and actually, before we get to that, um, can you explain multi-tenancy? Multi tenancy? Because I don't understand that. So as of today, as, in, as you said, you're using 2009 and in, 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 you know, in a migration to 2018. What actually happens is the whole database is one single database. On If you see it from your SQL perspective, there's one mm -hmm. single database. What multi-tenancy offers you is it allows you to separate that database into uh, multiple tenants and number of tenants it depends on how you want it. But all those ten tenants share a common application database where all the common tables which are access by all the tenants will be available in one separate database. And then each tenant will kind of uh, refer them while using them from that database. Uh, the, okay, so, so is that for uh, like, like if there are companies accessing it up, accessing the same database um, throughout the world um, to, to split it up to make, um, uh, to, uh, to make it faster, to, fa to make it faster or is it something else? So back in 2013 R2, when I actually uh, tested it with one of the one of our customer back then, uh, the idea was also around uh, the performance of a company, which mm -hmm. is being degraded because there is one big company. Because eventually, at the end of the day, in SQL, there was one big database. Mm -hmm. So what customer wanted is to kind of separate out that big company so that the other company performance doesn't degrade while they are doing a insert or a read operation. So then uh -huh. we kind of fork that company out in a separate tenant and other companies in, in one separate tenant. And then there was a master database, which is common to both. But if we see it from the SaaS perspective, uh, Microsoft uses multi-tenancy where each customer is a tenant. And then all those customer and number of tenants on, on one environment is how Microsoft plans it, which we have no info, but all the tenants in that share the same application database where their permissions are same because you can't, we can't change uh, Microsoft permissions in, in future version in Business Central. So those tables which are supposed to be common for all the tenants, they reside in one database and that makes upgrade more simpler because you are just updating the tenant separately and the application get upgraded separately. So if you see on your database as of today, any table, majority of tables in 2 million range are kind of part of your application database. Mm -hmm. And then other tables which are specific to company are part of the separate database in a, in a multi-tenant environment. Uh, okay. Uh, that's, um, that's really interesting. So what other cool features of Business Central are there? Uh, that, that someone like me wouldn't uh, necessarily know about right now? So the cool features, are, as in, uh, they, they keep on uh, adding new and new features. So if I talk about uh, the recent release that just came up, uh, one of the cool features that uh, customers are majorly liking is about having a uh, kind of posted uh, journal entries. So in your version where you are right now, if you post a journal entry from finance, there's no record of it so that somebody can go and check who did this posting and how much that was posted. As you can surely check on your GL entries, but it'll be hard to identify who did and when. So now there is a posted uh, journal journal line where anytime somebody uh, posts a journal, it actually gets stored in a post table and you can always check and even reverse some transaction if you want. Uh, Microsoft have done great work on emailing. So the emailing engine is super cool. Now, I would even say that the whole Outlook web client is part of the business center. You can do all kinds of formatting. You can attach multiple attachment as you want. Uh, they have added profiles kind of uh, scenarios so you can define that if my sales emails are going out, then they go with the sales ID. If these purchase emails are going out, they go with this purchase email ID and things like that. So which makes it more easier for customers because it's, you know, it was always required to have a scenario based email system. 
and you know you can enqueue them in your draft as you do it in your outlook you can send them later you can even check what was sent out by my business central tenant and you know resend those emails if if required uh the other cool thing that i think is about there is something called as retention policies that microsoft introduced with business central which means if you have a table where you are keeping a log of certain stuff that these are being done you can actually define a retention policy that after these many days this data should be deleted so you don't have to worry about that legacy data being created so if you have a log entry of something going out and you don't want to keep a history after 15 days you can always clean that up using retention policies oh well, that's um that's really cool because um because yeah space um uh, space can get to be a really big yeah. thing especially um uh, especially in companies with um uh, millions of transactions yeah um so 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 speaking of business central you um uh, you have a weekly um a weekly I, i'm not sure um how to describe it but it's a um it's a youtube um uh, it's a youtube video where where you have a lot of people um i think from from all over um where you discuss different topics about business central it's um, what uh, what um what's the name of your um weekly business central discussion it's called bc open discussion B, uh, bc open discussion and and is this something that you need to um get um get on like an exclusive waiting list to be able to join or is it open um uh, is it open to everyone it's it's open to everyone there is a separate page on my blog where people can go and register and once you register if you want to continue you can tell us in the next meeting and we'll make you default attendee so you don't have to go and register again uh, so, okay uh, um, so 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 somebody that wants to be part of the um business um bc open discussion um just um, goes um goes to your website um signs up and then uh, and then you get a invite to um be part of the discussion yes cool um so um so so can you talk about the bc open discussion how that um how you started that and and why and and what it, what it's all about uh yeah so the major reason was uh, uh request on different social media about the questions and all uh i get so many questions on my email on social media platform and all and most of them requested a phone number which i don't share <laughs> and the reasons are pretty obvious because i also have to work for eight hours on my job so i can i you know i'll not be able to answer every question that is put forward on a phone call specific especially so it was a great way to kind of uh, help me to answer people question if i can rather than they waiting on my email reply for months sometime for days sometime depending on how busy or how free i am and it's on saturday i have time on saturday spending an hour not cause any much trouble to me and i also get you know uh, inputs for my blogs so you know you sometimes feel like you're disconnected what you're writing is either nobody wants to read about it or you know listen to it or is it something that actually needed or not so with those bc open discussion i also get an idea that okay this is something where people are struggling with let me try it out even if it is not something which i'm doing so that i also learn and also write a blog about it so it helps me on multiple front oh wow that's uh, um that's really cool so um so it's kind of a it's kind of a like um idea pot um that uh, um that you just keep getting cool yes. ideas out of and um and and that you are able to help out people too yes. so um So so one of the things that I've noticed and and you mentioned you mentioned you get questions like email and um and and I've noticed that like like even on um even on your YouTube channel um someone will write a comment and then you'll and then you'll um then you'll respond with a really um a, a really good like um technical answer um to it so 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 you're just um very very nice and very very accessible um, to um, to people saying hey um I have this question can you um can you help me um can you help me out So um so so um can you can you talk can you talk more about that does that ever get uh, um do you do you ever get frustrated and be like uh um so, solve it yourself um cuz that just doesn't seem like your your personality at all um you just seem like a genuine genuinely um good um good nice person that likes to, like that likes to help people 
Yeah, the only frustration that happens is sometimes I, I, I really get weird emails, you know, like people expect me to reply. And that's where it, it, it gets a little bit frustrating as in some people, when I started blogging, they, I had my number on web everywhere on Facebook and all. And some people have my number, which is okay. I don't mind people having my number, but then they expect me to answer everybody's phone call or reply to their email instantly. Mm -hmm. That's the only time I, I feel a little bit frustrated where people, you know, keep on emailing uh, on the same email chain that I need this answer today, which is, you know, which is, I guess, expecting a lot from someone. I would not expect it from anybody as in everybody is busy. They have their own work. Other than that, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm open to answer any questions if I can anytime. And, you know, yeah, yeah. And, that, and of all the um, of all the stuff that I, I'm, I I'm sure that happens every once in a while because like every one out of a hundred people are like hey hey fix this for me fix this for me fix this for me but uh, but uh, but then like most uh, uh, most people uh, mo most people they try they try something first and they try they try something else and then they're so frustrated and they say hey hey can you help me out so um, um so so that's really cool that um that, that you're that you always well at least from what I've seen um, that you always have such a positive attitude about helping people. So, so one of my questions is where, um, where, where that comes from. Like, why, why, uh, why are you such a positive, helpful person? I guess that 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 comes from your family, uh, the you know the way your elders treat uh, or behave, in and you have seen them doing it. You kind of follow the same line. Uh, you know, I always feel that you cannot. Uh, learn kind of things these these are kind of that you learn from your childhood or from your birth what have seen around you how people around you are and how you know how they respond to people request or how helpful they are so you actually start doing that there's nothing extra that you can do to learn these kind of skills i guess huh. so um so, so that's uh, that's pretty cool so it sounds like you have a really cool family Yes, as in we are still a, you know, a, a combined family, uh, uh, me, my wife, my daughter, uh, we still live with our parents uh, and I have a brother and a sister with us. So it's, you know, it's a good size, seven, eight people in, in the family. And then uh, the part of the India where I belong to, which is the northern part of India, we still have uh, three generation behind relations where, where we know people. So it's, if I look at collectively, it's a, it's a huge family. And, you know, we, we kind of help each other at, at any situation or in any good or bad situations. So I guess that's where it comes from because it's, you see a strong tight family and you learn things from them. Cool, so uh, any other Navision um, programmers in your family? Uh, my brother recently started, but he's fairly new. He's still, you know, learning the product, but fairly new. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that's really cool. So, so in, um, in 10 years, there'll be a, another one of you, uh, making awesome YouTube videos and, and that that's kind it. of thing. <laughs> cool. Uh, that's, uh, uh, that's great news. So, um, so, so, so that's kind of uh, that's kind of with my next question is uh, if somebody um, if somebody um, if somebody w was just starting with Nav and, and wanted to become like you um, like an expert at an expert at everything what uh, what advice would you um, give a new programmer in Nav? Uh, as a, to start with, I'm not an expert. I, I never consider myself an expert, and I, I keep on saying about it that I'm I'm still a junior fresher, or or a, you know, because the product is so big, there are so many things that that can be learned in the product. So you can actually never be an expert, but the idea is to uh, the the beauty about Nav or Business Central is that most of the code that you can think of is already somewhere written by Microsoft. You need to start learning the product. Once you know uh, how the product works, you'll surely know the kind of code that you are looking for has been written somewhere by Microsoft. And you just need to uh, refer that code to write your correct code. Now, uh, 
you know, as in recently, and I'm I'm seeing it recently that in community people are have started putting their code segments, which is something the community is not for. It's 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 for a problem where where you get stuck on a situation rather than uh, copying your whole code and putting it into community and requesting it to fix it. Mm-hmm. So I guess the suggestion would be for those uh, people who are doing this, and I don't know who they are, is to actually try it out. Figure it out by yourself. It takes time initially. It took me time in 2010 to understand how the product work. But if you, I always believe that either you engage for, let's say, for 10 years into the product, whatever the product is, it can be Navigen or any other product that you're working for. But if you engage first ten year and spend good amount of time with the product, then rest of your life, whatever the time you work for, will be pretty easy because you know what you're working on. And the other style is that you enjoy first ten years and then keep doing the same amount of effort for rest of your life. So it's up to you which route you want to go, because early in your career there is good amount of time that you that you can give to the product or whatever the technology that you're working on and learn it to reach to, you know, to a mid level and then keep, you know, keep your pace because as your age goes on, your learning capabilities also reduces. They'll always never be same as they were 10 years ago that I had. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I always believe that spend initial year in a, uh, in a learning mode, if you want to call it, and then uh, kind of enjoy the journey in the future with, with less efforts. Well, and then do you think that a, um, do you think that a career in nav programming is, is good for someone that, that doesn't know what they want to do? Uh, would you recommend that to a, a new technical person that is looking for, um, lo- lo- looking for a, a career? Uh, yes, as in, if you are interested in programming, uh, Business Central, as of today, have variety of options. Uh, Microsoft have good offering with the Power Platform, so it's not just NAB or Business Central. When I when I think about the product, it's a big product which is called as Business Central, or oh, sorry, Dynamics 365, and Business Central is one just small piece of that big family. So when you think when I think about it now, I'm still on that business central zone, but I actually has to expand my horizon to understand what else is in that D three sixty five domain. So it's a big product offering with so many products in that one, you know, one big umbrella of D three sixty five. So it's you know, uh-huh. it's a, it's a cool offering with different kind of areas where you can focus and you know learn and be master on one of the area. Cool. And that's, uh, that's a really good way of looking at it that like, no matter what you're interested in, there's probably something in dynamics or, yeah. or um, um, in, in nav or business central for, for you to specialize and, and become an expert at. Yeah. So, uh, so, so kind of going back um, to, um, I noticed that your most recent blog post is on flow, flow filters. And yes. I thought that was really, really cool because like um, no matter how, um, it seems like no matter how long people um, use Navision, then then a lot of people just never fully understand flow filters. And so I um, I get um, I get I get questions about flow filters from people that have been u- from users that have been using Nav for uh, for ten years. And so I thought um, I thought that just um, go um, your back to the basics with flow filters was just a really really cool. Um, topic that um, uh, because uh, um, because it's kind of unique and and a weird thing to now, but but at the same time it's very very powerful. So could you, could you give some background on uh, why why that blog post for your uh, for your gen for your uh, uh, was it the first first blog post in January that no this was the second uh, that was today I guess yeah. So as I said earlier, these ideas, I, I kind of, uh, majority of them are now coming from BC Open discussion. And mm-hmm. this question was actually in one of the questions in the last BC Open discussion. Where somebody was a little bit confused, where should he filter out? Should he filter out on a dimension, global dimension one code or global dimension one filter? 
And you know, I, I actually thought about it that I, I did explain it on BC Open discussion. And then I really thought about it that, yes, this seems a gap. So, you know, and I already had prepared an example for that person who was there on that BC Open discussion. So I thought, okay, let's utilize the same and write a blog post, it might help. And while I was writing it, and I, I wanted to give it a title so that it makes sense. And during that writing of that article, I thought about maybe I can write more about other basic stuffs, which are common in lab or business central world, but we might have to rethink about them as the product is changing or as the programming is changing. So maybe I'll attempt more in future with back to basic concept. Yeah, um, I thought that was, um, I thought that was really cool. So, so you're, um, you're, you're in India and you said North, Northern India, is that right? Yes. And, and what, um, what, 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 what city or area in Northern India? So it's, it's, the city is called Dehradun. It's a capital of a state called Uttarakhand. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, so and I don't know very, uh, I don't know very much about that, but but um, I live in Bangkok, and one of the uh, what one of the best, or, or actually my uh, my favorite um, Indian restaurant in Bangkok is from North Northwest Indian cuisine. Um, so so I'm not sure if um, I'm not sure if 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 you're like North Northwest, um, if if you have the same delicious food that that um, the, the the charcoal restaurant in um, in Bangkok um, has. Okay, maybe because uh, so to kind of place it on the map, we share a border with China, we share a border with Nepal, and then yes, so these are the two borders that we share with other countries, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, in the, so northwest would be uh, a little bit towards Himachal, that's a separate state. But yeah, as in the cuisine should be nearly similar. They they should not be that that different. Uh, uh, okay, and and one of the things uh, one of the things that this restaurant um, does is they they don't really have very many curries. And and whenever uh, w whenever I go there and one of my friends says, "Hey, um, can I have curry?" Then uh, um, th then the uh, the server gives this big explanation about, "Oh, this is this is Northwest Indian cuisine. We don't really have uh, we don't really have curries. We have this delicious food, this delicious food, this delicious food." But um, but but no no like um, bowls of soupy curry um, like yeah. like you're used to at other Indian restaurants. So so is that similar to the cuisine um, around your house? Yes, majority of them. So the local cuisines don't have much curry and you know yeah. That means cool and um, yeah um, yeah and and I don't remember um, I don't well I try I I order something different every time. Oh um, the the thing that I really like is their um, their paratha is okay. um, paratha has like a whole bunch of layers. Uh, so, so, so you know how usually paratha has um, li like it has like three or four layers, but yeah. in this restaurant, uh, the paratha has like it seems like twenty different layers, and and, and they recommend that you can like you, you like peel peel, off, peel right. layer by layer. Uh, is is that similar to by your house? Uh, no, that's not here. That's <laughs> that's maybe nearby state. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, or, or, or it could, it could just be this, um, uh, this restaurant trying to be cool. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so, so anyway, th uh, this is kind of a, this is kind of an aside, but, um, but, but I, I, I was vegetarian for about four years and, and I've been to, I've been to India a, a few times, maybe about 10 times, um, cause my company has an office in Bangalore and, um, uh, and, and actually my, my favorite Indian cuisine that you can only find in India is Indian style veggie burgers? Oh yeah, <laughs> um, be, because like, like um, out, um, outside of India, then all of the people are trying to make the veggie burgers like to be pretend meat. Yes. Where, where where inside of India, then people just say, "Hey, we're gonna make a burger uh, with um, uh, we're gonna make a veg burger, and it's gonna be the most delicious thing ever." Uh, we're, we're outside of India. Uh, they're they're not really thinking about delicious. They're trying. They're thinking, okay, how do we how do we make this into a pretend meat burger? Burger. Right. So so the first time, um, um, I think I was in a I think I was in a hotel. I, uh, my uh, my flight had arrived. Um, the the the, um, the hotel deli was open until like three a.m. I, 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 and I ordered a veggie burger and and I ate it and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the 
uh, this is the most uh, most delicious uh, veggie burger that I've ever had. And then um, and then I tried um, more and more veggie burgers in in India. And, and just the um, the veggie burgers in India are are like 20, uh, 20 times better than any veggie burger like out um, outside of India that I've tried. Yeah, and I guess the reason is about the uh, uh, what majority of population eat. So you know, still today that uh, the majority of population in India is non-veg. So you know, as much as offering we have for the veg food here in India, it's it's you know, it'll be because the consumers are vegetarian, most of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even the meat eaters don't prefer to eat meat every day. You know, they'll prefer maybe once in a week or twice in a week at the max, but rest of the day, they'll also be vegetarian. So the vegetarian market becomes big because the consumers are good. Oh yeah. And that's a, uh, that's a good point because I, like I have, um, and, and I used to be this way before I, uh, before I tried out vegetarianism for, for the four years that I did. Um, but, but a lot of, a lot of my friends back in the U S um, if you, if you try to have them eat a meal without meat, Yes. then they just uh, like, like they just they just can't do it like every meal has to have um has to have Some meat, or, meat. Yeah. Um, or, or 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 it just like ruins their day or or or, or something yeah so so it's kind of it's kind of interesting and yeah yeah that's uh, that's a good point too that like even the non-veg people um eat um, um even the non-veg people right. eat, um, eat a lot of vegetarian food throughout the day yeah. um so so uh, I think uh, I think we're nearing a good stopping point. Anything, um, any final words or or final um, final advice? Oh, uh, uh, before you get to your final advice, can you uh, um, can you talk about um, can you talk about like if people if people want to contact you, then what's uh, what's the best way? You, you kind of you kind of mentioned it before, but if you could uh, if you could give a plug for like your YouTube channel and your blog and 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 anything else, um, I'll I'll also put um, links in the description of of the YouTube video. Uh, so yeah, as in the blog uh, website is www.sauravdhani.com. Uh, the Twitter account with the name of Post Saurav, email ID with postsaurav at the rate gmail.com. And on YouTube, it's again uh, Saurav Dhani. And on Facebook, it's Saurav MSTUIN 365DC. So it's, you know, it's easier if you start from the blog, you'll find all the links, all the social media links. Yeah, and there is a contact me form on the blog also, which where I'll get a direct email out of it. Yeah, cool, that's cool. Um, and so, um, and so, any um, any final any final words of advice or anything else that you want to talk about that we didn't talk about so far? Um, no, I guess it's you know uh, the product is changing, and for the NAV people, the only advice or the final word is that we should start unlearning nav because at the, I, I feel at this point in business central we need to start uh, unlearn whatever we learn in the nav world from a perspective of to learn what's changing in the product uh, the programming language have changed uh, the coding uh, the ways of coding and the way you used to code in the past are completely changed I, as I said earlier, I cannot say that I'm a 10 year experience in NAV or BC world. I'm just one year experience or two year experience in business central world because I still have to go back to NAV, which is okay. I don't mind it, but the same rules of programming, I cannot apply it into the business central world. So it's, you know, I think it's a shift and every technology sheet is shift in five to 10 years. So it's a time where we are in NAV or business central space so let's start on learning NAV and learning business center. Great, and that's uh, that's a great that's a great concluding mes message, and and especially applicable for someone like uh, for someone like me who's not on business central yet. So, uh, so so thanks uh, thanks so much. This has been a really cool um, interview, and and thanks very much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me.